Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. You hit the spot. The place for the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Put your thinking caps on, because the conversation starts now. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. The place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Today, we have Sonia Jetka from Melbourne, Australia. Yes, I have a lot of lovely people down in Australia. It's a really cool place. I'm telling you, you should save your pennies and go down there. There's so much to see and learn. But she's a woman with a very interesting story. She's got a lot. She was originally from Bosnia and had to escape, you know, and go to Australia. So I'm going to ask her a little bit about that. She became a student of Bob Proctor, one of my favorite people, bless his soul. She overcame childhood trauma. She's a spiritualist. She's very spiritual. Um, she had two kids and she can do some hair brains. <laughs> there is nothing like a hairdresser. A hairdresser is the original psychotherapist. You tell them everything from the color of your roots to the root cause of your divorce. I mean, they sit in that chair and they just release, but it's also very therapeutic. And so what she's doing is she's impacting lives. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about that and then some. Let's welcome her to the show. How are you, Sonia? Thank you, April. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for everyone that's listening today. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I love that picture of the Native American woman yeah. in the background. Um, my beautiful. family is originally Creek Indians from Andalusia, Alabama. And yeah. so um, they, much too, were refugees because they had to leave their native land because of slavery and enslavement. So they took on the identity of being Negroes, uh, colored people niggas, black folks, I, whatever name you want to call them, so that they could keep their identity and also stay on that sacred land. I want to start there, if you don't mind, because people have a tendency to be insensitive or less sensitive to people that have had to flee, you know, for, for immigrant reasons. And for some reason, I think they forget that you had a home there that it, you went to school there, all your friends are there, your cousins are there, you had family dinners. You don't want to just uproot and come to a country that you don't speak the language, that you have to acculturate and assimilate, go to school, uh, be singled out because you're different. What was that process for you? And what was it like to have to leave Bosnia to go to Australia? Um, it was it was definitely a, a, a very interesting experience because when when the war came to um, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, like it was coming into different cities, but it wasn't still where we were. Um, and then sort of one day they came and said, OK, there's trouble coming. we got to pack up and pretty much. But what we thought at that time was that we just had to leave for a couple of um, days till everything settled. So we pretty much just packed a backpack for the weekend um, because we thought we'll be back. And that was pretty much the last time I ever went back. So we just had to then keep going further and further because it just got worse and worse from there. So um, so after we left there, we um, went and stayed with my grandparents in a different um, part, in Serbia part, and we sort of stayed there with them for three months because still hoping there was hope that we were going to go back and life will go back to normal. But then we realised there was just getting worse and worse, the civil war at that time. And um, just to understand the civil war, uh, my family comes from a mixed marriage. Mm. So... Um, you know, at that time, you really, if you mixed marriage, you really weren't welcome there or you would have had to choose a side. And I had family on all three sides, you know, either Catholic, Croatian, uh, Muslim, Orthodox. And oh. so that's what, we, yeah, so we sort of decided to keep going. And then from there, we went to Austria. Um, 
Mm. And we stayed in Vienna with my um, auntie. We were very blessed that we did have her there because a lot of other people, they had to stay in a lot of um, refuge camps. And so in some way, I was still blessed that I had my auntie there. Um, but the language barrier was very difficult at that time, you know, because, you know, you don't speak German. <laughs> no, no. And, and trying to go to a school um, that you just got thrown into, into you know Austrian school so that was it was challenging the only good thing was there were sorry no no I'm saying did those yeah. things contribute to your trauma oh yes yeah because you, you know you were definitely thrown out of your comfort zone and you just had to you know learn to to swim you know <laughs> or you drown uh we were we were lucky that at that time there was a lot of people that were refugees so when I went to school there were other sort of kids like us. So we sort of had each other to sort of hold on and understand us. But as you said, sometimes when you migrate, people can sort of look at you, you know, are you here to, you know, take our jobs? Why are you here? Why don't you go home? But as you said, they don't realize that, you know, you don't have a choice. Um, well, we have, you know, that and then some, we have the people that have come to this country and that have gotten better benefits, okay? They get housing, they get discounted housing, they get medical, uh, they get free schooling. I'm not knocking any of that. If you work and you pay your way and you pay your taxes. But then they come and they go, oh, I hate America and da, 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 all this kind of stuff. Then you got options. And people come to America really thinking that it is the, you know, the land of the free and the home of the brave. But when you get to that border, things have changed considerably. You know, it's to the point where if you've kind of, I think they're passing a law that if you've passed through two or three countries before coming to America and you did not seek asylum there, you're not eligible for here. Oh, wow. And it's a big, wide world, you know. Your parents didn't have anything to do with the war, but mm. we are a victim of happenstance and it, it can be traumatic. So you talked about all of your different multicultural uh, ethnic diversities, but how did you latch on to, to your spirituality? Because I know in some countries, you know, that you're not supposed to talk about religion. You don't practice the standard religion, but then you have, a very disciplined Muslim background and Catholic background. Those are very different, um, but very stern religions. How did you find your your balance? How did you navigate through all of that? Um, growing up, my parents allowed us to be free and find ourselves. You know, they never really pushed any religion onto us. And I was very grateful for that. Um, but in sort of growing up, I always um, knew that there was something more out there, but I still didn't know what it was. I always, um, it's actually interesting. It's only years later when I went into spirituality and I did a lot of breath work and sound healing and journeys that I've actually realized that that spiritual path was always within me. I just didn't know at that time. I had to find it. So that didn't come to me till later. I was pretty much grown up as an atheist. Um, I, I respected every religion. You know, if I got invited to, you know, to go to Christmas and Easter's and um, Orthodox, I, I was everywhere, you know. And I, I still respect all religions, doesn't matter what you are. Um, so, but I definitely, after finding my spiritual path is where I felt like I found my home. I, like my, my soul has found the home where I belong. Yeah. Now, spirituality versus religion. Is your spirituality uh, connected to a religious doctrine or are you into a more energy metaphysical type of, of energy, discipline, learning and love? It's for me, it's all energy. It's all energy. It comes down to um, like I, I study past life regression as well. I've been studying it for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I understand very deeply of 
of carnation and when we come back and you know we come back to learn different lessons and um clear different paths from different parts so i i understand um you know maybe years ago i would have been scared of death um as now you know i've learned to surrender and surrender to the process and trust the universe when my time comes comes this is you know i'm just borrowing this body for a very short time you know um, and that's what i said during covid i had my i had my come to jesus meeting i sure did and a couple cocktails <laughs> because it was very very unnerving and it's still unnerving i'm still you know i get in a crowd of people and i keep my distance when I go somewhere, large crowds or whatever, I'm always looking for an exit route. The path, the path of least resistance. You and I kind of joked around and talked about alternative universe mindsets and plant medicine. Now here in the United States, they are going crazy with the marijuana. It's genetically modified brains. They, they call it gasoline weed. You know, it used to be a mystique about it. And now they're taking it a step further with psychedelics. And I was with a friend of mine this past weekend and her son came in with this beautiful pink box. And I said, well, what is that? I opened it up. It's pre-packaged psychedelic mushrooms. Now, people go on Arawesca trips. You talked about past life regression because I was going to a, a place up in New York to do a past life regression. And I got a little nervous. But... When it takes people into a alternative reality, from what I hear, from what I understand, is that that is the greatest state of consciousness because you know who you were and it gives you a preparation for who you want to be, but it can be extremely scary. You know, when finding yourself, wasn't that kind of scary when you pulled back the layers and found out, okay, this is who I am, but this is who I am in the physical realm. This is who I am in the metaphysical realm. This is who I am in the spiritual realm. You're all these different pieces uh, to a pie. How do people pull it together and get their shit together? Because you can be all over the place. I mean, really, you can blow your own mind. You can. And that's the thing is what a lot of people don't realize is when you choose to work on your traumas and heal, it's not all skip, you know, to the happy ending. Right. You know, you got to go through some uh, deep things that you you need to allow yourself to trust and surrender. And, you know, the, the only way you can heal yourself is if you bring it back to the surface. And, you know, a lot of people um, have difficulty of bringing those memories. And a lot of the stuff that they're suffering as an adult is from the childhood trauma that um that they hold and they just keep pushing it down but what happened eventually it, it's got to come out somewhere you know because your body gets full of those emotions that you've never dealt with and that's when your body starts having physical pain because the emotional pain becomes physical pain so that's when you get the, the cancers and tumors and things is because you haven't released it so when you decide to work on yourself, um, you, you got to be ready for some um, uncomfortable feelings and, you know, journey. And the thing is, what I've learned is, you know, I've, st I've studied for many years all different, you know, how energy works in universal laws and working on myself. And I've actually realized that more I've learned, I really don't know nothing yet. There is so much more to learn, and I'm gonna be, a, a you know, a student of this life till my last breath. And then again, preparation for the next life. But um, your trauma could have been, you know, your grandmother's or great grandmother's, hundred percent, who's passed down from generation to generation. There's so many things to reveal. Now, let me ask you, have you done a past life regression? Yes? Yeah. And honestly, for me, um, my first past life regression was actually, um, I was at the Mind, Body and Spirit Festival. And there was um, a guy there and he was only doing a quick 15 minute session. That's it. 
But in those 15 minutes, so much came out that I was actually just crying and crying. And I actually could not stop crying because the vision that came through, it came through as a Native American. And I was in this tribe and I was a healer there. So, and because when you do the past life regression, you don't only see it or look at it, you you feel it. Um, and that's when I realized why I have connection to certain countries, certain music, to certain cultures. Um, and then after that, I organized uh, an intense four-hour session with him. And that's when we really deep dive. And, and my, most of my answers have come from there. Wow. Four, four hours? Yes. No. <laughs> and then after you go through something like this, you're meeting a new you. You'll never be the same. Now you've got your own information overload. How do you settle in and process that? Because I would keep looking over my shoulder. I, you know, I don't know how I would respond. I don't know as again, I don't know if I'd be like you just skipping along. I'd be tripping along because, okay, this is this, and maybe I'd overthink it, basically. Yeah. Grounding is very important. Um um, any type of grounding there's different ways of grounding um, as much as uh, when you when you open up yourself to spiritual world a lot of people spend too much time you know in the spiritual from here and above and not uh, focus on from your solar plexus and down as mm -hmm. you know the roots of your branch of yourself is as important as letting the branches go up both are as important and not to be scared of the darkness you know like you gotta remember the seeds come from soil so um to embrace both and even when you feel um like this darkness in you is actually to give a love and blessings to release it mm. Okay. that's how you so, so don't you feel scared. so don't feel like you're trapped in this no. situation this is actually a way for you to grow roots to become more yes. grounded, to get more strong okay and you know if you in all this journey if you connect to your heart your pure heart um unconditional love you've got nothing to be scared of so now let's talk about some other roots. The root of your hair. Other <laughs> <laughs> roots. What is, are you still doing hair now? Are you still styling? Yeah, I'm still doing it and loving it. What is the trends now? What are, you know, is it coloring? Is it texture? What are people really going for? Short hair, long hair? Honestly, I feel like this generation, this time, anything goes. I feel like years ago, there will be a certain trend that will come out and everyone will be the same, you know. Mm -hmm. As as now, um, because there's so much out there, um, I think people are learning to really go with what suits them, not just what the trend is. Right. And, and go more natural, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, African-American women, girl, let me tell you how crazy it is here in California. We <laughs> had to get legislation passed to wear our natural hair. Wow. Corals in some places to wear kinky fros, uh, to wear dreadlocks. Do you know that they try to uh, wreak havoc? And a white girl can come in with pink hair and it's absolutely fine. Nobody That's says anything. Crazy. They can be tatted from their neck down to their toes and nobody says anything. But we have to get government legislation passed to do things with our hair. You know, and hair care and hair care products are, um, I'm not going to put you in an adversarial position because I know you got to use a lot of the products. But I had a friend that was telling me that, you know, there's a lot of chemicals in those too that can seep in and you know cause wreak all kind of havoc. There's a lawsuit going on here about hair straighteners that the hair straighteners does do something to the women's hormones and causes cancer and infertility for straightening hair. They're saying hair color can um, you know seep in and cause dementia. Do you use alternatives like henna and 
and other things outside of actual chemicals sometimes when yeah I think the, the them... brand that I the brand that I use it's very low in ammonia um and actually it's actually interesting because you um years ago I started so researching and I found a network marketing that um did a lot of uh, plant base all the skincare all the hair products everything um, especially because I had a daughter that was sort of growing up in a TJ and I really wanted to uh, introduce her to plant-based makeup. So I was sort of introduced to a lot of the alternative from, you know, for, for many years now. And I understand that a lot of the chemicals can go, um, you know, go through your skin. So it's very important what you, what you put on. Yeah. hundred percent. Are you a, are you a health nut? Do you like, do you eat like organically? Are you vegan, vegetarian? No, I'm not but, that crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very conscious. Um, and I, I definitely know that I have more to improve. Um, I don't drink alcohol and I've never been, my body just does not I've never liked it and the last probably I don't know how many years just it's just not something that I'm interested in my body actually rejected uh, rejected coffee I don't drink coffee anymore so mm -hmm. I've learned to listen to my body if it doesn't want it for a reason I, I just stop um so I, I do try consciously you know of course you know it's about balance you still gotta have a bit of a chocolate here and there oh yeah it's about balance but sometimes you it's know about balance this weekend I went to the extreme. <laughs> I, you know, I tilted the meter, but everything in moderation, even in my opinion, sometimes, you know, grounding yourself with spirituality because you find people get um, so excited about the new person that they are or what they're uncovering that sometimes it can become obsessive. That's food, drugs, sex, alcohol, anything that you find that's stimulating and sets off those endorphins uh, in your brain, it takes you there. So let's talk about some fun stuff though. What is some of your guilty pleasures? What do you love to do? <laughs> My guilty pleasures? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm not really sure if I have. I mean, as you said, chocolate. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> likes you know, chocolate. <laughs> Honestly, I live a pretty um, chill, pretty healthy life. Like, I don't know what would I call as a guilty do you pleasure. Go, do you go walking in the bush or go down to the but, beach? Yeah, but that's, that's not a guilty. That's my reward. <laughs> well, and, and absolutely. It's all about the vernacular. It's like how you yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I love uh, daily swims in the ocean doesn't matter what season it is I just love merging into the salt water um, I do my 6 a.m gratitude um, through the Bob Proctor um, I've actually um, I've joined a 6 a.m gratitude that I run every morning for my uh, personal development course that I did well it is Bob Proctor but my mentor is uh, Danny Lich that she's uh, his personal consultant in Australia mm. so I do that every morning um, you know I meditate I you know I go to the gym that's good um, well you're doing all the right things do you yeah. uh, do you like to go out and dance can you yes both? I do <laughs> well, my husband, my husband is actually a DJ. So, oh my goodness! So we've, I've, you know, I've been with, you know, we've been together for twenty five years, and you know, my house is always full of music. We love music. My kids have grown up with music, you know, and you know, we love supporting him. And so, you know, I love having a good dance, hundred percent. And I'm always the one driving him there and driving him home because <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> Now, I've been married 39 years. You've been married 25 years. What have you found to be one of the secrets to the successful marriage that you have? It's um, it's a beautiful journey to allow each other to be able to, you know, keep evolving and changing. Um, but it's just the love and respect that you have for each other that um, keeps you together. Um and I guess, you know, it doesn't matter how busy we are during the day is that on the end of the day, we always finish with, you know, together, you know, watching our favorite series. We love our Turkish series. Uh, but find something that is special for you too. 
you know, to always have time for each other. I found that the simple pleasures, you know, in 39 years, um, we tell each other, you know, thank you for getting me some water or thank you for mm. cooking breakfast. Um, I love you. I can't say I love you enough. Mm. I told him the other day, I said, you know what? I got to get myself together. <laughs> he goes, why? I said, I am just out of control in love with you. I am. <laughs> You know, and it's a beautiful thing. And we have had, you know, spiritual healers and things saying that we have traveled many lifetimes together as soulmates. No, so we I'm, did as well, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm very conscious of that. I don't take that for granted. Um, and I hope that people really do their due diligence when they look into relationships and try to find someone. If there's someone that has a certain pattern, you know the pattern you know, that you don't like, or they talk to you or mistreat you or hit you, and you're drawn to those same type of individuals, then maybe it's time to do some self-evaluation and see who you really are, what you really deserve, and what you really want. Let's ask some more fun questions. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, what appliance would you be and why? An appliance? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a fun question. <laughs> Oh, wow, an appliance. I don't know, a, um, a mixer? <laughs> a mixer. A lot of people like to be a mixer. I said I'll be the refrigerator because I just want to chill. <laughs> I just want to create different things and make different stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. What would you tell a 25-year-old Sanja Jekka? As in 25-year-old you yourself at 25 years old um oh wow like you know just keep doing what you're doing um you're on the right track um be proud of yourself and you're gonna be fine you got nothing to worry about what do you tell a person that's on a spiritual quest right now brains and we're just covering it with a broad stroke it can be any religious doctrine, you know, anything that you want. But what would you tell a seeker? The thing is, we all have our different journeys. And it's whatever you found that you connect to your soul. Doesn't mean that if I'll read a book and I connect a certain book or a certain healer or a spiritual guru, doesn't mean that you are on the same path as that. So I just always say, you know, it doesn't matter who you listen to, what you follow, just take whatever you want to take from that person and make it your own. There is no right and wrong with the spiritual path. And you cannot push anyone if they're not ready. Everyone has to be ready in their own time. I agree. Um, but also it is to have your own inner voice. Yeah. Ask the right questions that pertain to you. You know, a lot of people have died in the name of religion or in the name of spirituality because they have been a follower. They seek so hard looking for acceptance, self worth, validation, forgiveness, self assurance, that they really don't see the forest for the trees. You know, that they miss the big picture, the joy, the happiness, the learning to be content. Like you say, dealing with this thing called death. Because let me tell you, it's like taxes. <laughs> it's guaranteed. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to expire. We are all organic. And it's not how you die, brains. It's how you live. So are you currently running a program that you are working with other individuals? Um. Well, what I do at the moment is I um, like I have a whole place set up that, I mean, my business is called House of Infinite Healing. So it's all um, under sort of one thing and what I do here and then I do healing as well. So mm -hmm. I do Reiki, I do uh, quantum touch healing, I do um, past life regression, uh, pranic healing, um, so I'm very fortunate that I'm, I'm able to sort of um, 
merge the two together actually after this i, I have a reiki session that I, i've got booked in so <laughs> i'm gonna do that now with all your gifts and talents how do you keep yourself clean and clear as a conduit your mind your spirit uh, because you're doing a lot of heavy lifting outside of lifting that curling iron <laughs> But there, you know, it's a lot too. And then you're taking on things, you're seeing things. How do you separate your reality from their reality? It's all, as I said, it's all about being grounded, you know, being being grounded. And, you know, it's, again, this is, everyone has their different way of doing it. Some, some like to put a protection bubble around them. But the way... Um, I sort of, my way of doing it is it's through, um you know, uh, Michael Isinger. I don't know if you heard the author. Heard mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Um, The way his books are and the way he explains it is if you open your heart, what happens is <clears throat> a lot of people, you sort of, if you want to protect yourself and you close off because you feel like you need to protect your heart. But what happens is when you do that, you actually put blockages and your energy cannot flow through you so Mm -hmm. by actually having your heart open all the time you are protected because nothing can get to you it's like the sun sun when it shines it doesn't choose it's going to shine more on this person or that person it shines evenly on everyone so it's so how i see it is that's how i protect myself is by giving unconditional love anyone that I meet and sometimes when you meet people there um, you know you can be in the supermarket and you're the cashier and you know the person is really rude at you on from the other side you know those people are the ones that actually need more love than anyone else it's because that projection has got nothing to do with you it's their own personal thing that they're going through that they're dealing with to not to take things personal for to learn to have more compassion and to forgive you know one thing that um, I always teach all my patients is when they come for healing is I can give you as much healing as you want but if you don't learn to forgive from your past life you will continue to hold on to so much that you will not be able to fully heal till you forgive yourself and others absolutely forgiveness and love are two of the most challenging things it seems so simplistic it seems so easy but it takes a lot of effort it does Um, but it doesn't take any effort to be ugly and mean brains so take that into consideration it takes effort to heal yourself um to even want to know to want to take that journey it takes courage fortitude discipline um and then you have to be prepared for whatever comes up because Again, it's not all going to be 100%. You know, no. people say that and that's a new buzzword, 100%. If I hear that one more time, everything is not 100%. Some things are 20, some are 30, some are 2%. No. Um, but you have to weigh it and you have to figure out what uh, is your equalizer, what is going to make you whole. Well, you have just been a wealth of information and so grounding. It just, you know, both of us have gaps. And that's that's for, I love it. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we're very unique. They know exactly where to find us. So please tell my brains how to get in contact with you. Uh, they want to do a consultation. I'm sure there's some of these great modalities that you can do virtually. But yeah, there's uh, yeah, through the Reiki. It's um, you can do um, channeling and distant healing, and it's actually a really good um, technique that we sort of. It's a very old school that when you um, get that session done it actually clears your past works on your uh, present and it can actually clear your future as well um, mm. so you actually get connects to your higher self and sometimes the certain messages come through that you need to hear so it's it's a very very um for distant healing it's a, a very um a good model to, to book in yeah so you can definitely find me on instagram i'm under house dot off dot infinite dot healing um i'm just in the process of um getting my bio done like and adding it to the to there 
uh, but you definitely can contact me through it. Um, and then on Facebook, I'm just under Sanya Jekka, S-A-N-J-A, Jekka, J-E-K-A. I, I will be uh, creating a support group on there as well. So people can sort of um, connect and yeah. So there's a lot going on. Well, I appreciate everything that you've got going on and keep it flowing. That's why I said, um, Brains, tune in. Don't just sit here like lunch meat, a big old piece of bologna. Do something with your life. Explore options, alternatives, because this is the gateway. There are many doors. And you, you can believe me if you want to. If you don't, I'm not going to try to convince you. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see if you're prepared and if you're willing. Thank you so much, Sandra. You are just amazing. Thank you, Thank right. you for having me. All right, brains, get it together. Please go in and like, love, share, and subscribe. Like, love, share, and subscribe. We're on Instagram, on the edge with April Mahoney, all over the planet, same place. Google my name and uh, see what you can uncover when you pull back the layers. Have an amazing day, brains.